Hey Tayun, kamusta kayo dyan guys? Ito na, uh, so alam mo naman kanina uh, nasa webinar po tayo with uh, President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine uh, medyo seryoso yung webinar namin uh, thanks to my friend Ambassador Dina Jalal from Jakarta of course uh, Indonesia po yung mag-host ng, uh, sila yung chair ng um, ng G20 ngayon at may seryosong discussion about the possibility of uh, President Zelensky uh, meeting uh, President Vladimir Putin of Russia in Jakarta on the sidelines of G20. We're not sure kung mangyari or hindi, so, but yun yung konteksto ng webinar namin uh, with uh, President Vlod- Volodymyr Zelensky kanina. So yon, okay. So nakita naman yung mga pinos natin. At huwag nyo naman laitin na may plastic pa rin yung ano natin, yung lampshade natin. Ayan naman tayo mga Ilocano style, hindi nagtatanggal lang plastic. Uh, kailangan lang natin for proper lighting. So, kinuha ko itong lampshade na medyo, medyo magandang presyo na kaanap tayo. So, nilagay natin dyan. So, kamusta kayo dyan, guys? Um, so, today, uh, uh, wala pa tayong updates on the DND and the DFA position. But I, I, I have my own updates and we'll discuss that shortly. And then, I want to talk about also what I call mm, Marconomics. Right? Marcos Economics. At gaano ko mahalaga ito yung economic team niya, no? Uh, itong sinasabi natin na technocratic alchemy. So, ito, a classroom, ha? Marconomics. Alright? So, Marcos Economics. We see a lot of similarities in the sense that yung tatay niya, si Marcos Sr., yung kanyang ama, also relied on a lot of people from UP School of Economics. Uh, sorry, from UP, including people from uh, UP School of Economics like Jerry Seacott, among others. So, a lot of them Ivy League graduates, uh, American trained. So, we see a very similar trend here. Also, my element of team of rivals, ni race na ni Aimee Marcos yan. Of course, this goes back to an American historian's description of yung kabineta ni Lincoln. Oh, medyo feeling talaga, Lincoln talaga. Si Abraham Lincoln, yung kabineta niya, kung nanod kayo ng movie ni Lincoln, di ba? Uh, nakita niya, nag away yung kabineta niya kasi puro mga mga galing, pero galing sa iba't ibang kampo. But uh, what uh, Lincoln was able to do is to create a unified, inclusive, and very best and brightest cabinet. So one uh, American historian called it uh, a team of rivals. So si Aimee was saying maybe that's what we need. Now, I'm not going to comment on the entire cabinet. Of course, there are some positions more encouraging than the others. But it is an economic team. We see a lot of uh, similarity in terms of reliance on UP graduates or UP professors and Western trained economists, very established people, to run the economic agenda of the what I call Marconomics. All right? So Marcos Economics. Marcos Economics. But today also, of course, I want to talk about um, foreign policy and defense policy. Although wala pa tayong update dun sa DND at saka Department of Foreign Affairs. But mukhang, mukhang, I could be wrong on this, mukhang uh, Ambassador Moaldes is no longer in the contention. Uh, well, I said I support him as an ex-foreign secretary. But mukhang now it could go down uh, between uh, a career uh, 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 foreign uh, diplomat career diplomat, uh, and potentially my former professor, Ma'am Clarita Carlos. So, interesting, interesting. Looking forward to that. Wala pa naman, ano eh, wala pa naman finalized update on Jan. But it's, it's so, kasi ang problema is, Ambassador Mahal is so competent in handling our relations with the U.S. na parang, dyan ka na lang, sayang, dun ka na lang, just be effective. So, baka ganun na lang naging thinking. Pero balikan natin itong Marconomics. Okay, and let's talk about some numbers. So, kapon, I discussed about Diba guys, uh, expansionary fiscal pl- policy. Uh, diniscuss po natin, at of course, my second love is economics. Uh, my first love is international affairs. My second love is economics. Kabataan pa lang, habang nag, uh, I don't know, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Dragon Balls yung iba. Ito yung mga, yeah, ito yung mga inabangan ko nung kabataan pa lang, thanks to my dad, no, who made me listen to BBC News and all of that. Mga 6-7 year old pa lang, para gumanda yung English natin. But in the process, I absorb a lot of knowledge around the, about the world. So, bata pa lang ako, ito na talagang ginagawa natin, di ba? Mamaya na tayo nag-PlayStation and all. Um, so, going back again to Marconomics, let me talk about a number of important things here. So, kahapon pinag-usapan natin na people like Benjamin Jokna, among others, are known to be what you call heterodox uh, economists. They're much more, let's say, outside the box in terms of their thinking. Hindi sila na confined dun sa straight jacket of neoliberalism, which emphasizes uh, low inflation, relatively high interest rate to keep the inflation low, and of course to also benefit people who save, who put a lot of money there uh, in the banks, and less emphasis, let's say, on employment 
and sometimes even growth. No? So this is really the new liberal economic agenda that has dominated the world since the 1970s. Uh, now, we can have a whole lecture about new liberalism later on, which was a response to Keynesianism. But heterodox economists are known as new Keynesians no? or post-Keynesian economists. So they also believe in aggressive spending, a little bit more budget deficit, a little bit lower interest rate to push for growth, among others. So I think Benjamin Jokno kind of falls into that. But I'm going to quote Benjamin Jokno kanina, uh, later on. Because kanina nagsulat ako about this Markonomics. So let me go through it. Uh -uh. So there are a number of... Um, madumi to. Let me get this other one. So there are a number of uh, uh, data guys that we have to look at before we go into this. So meron tayong concern guys. So... Ganito kasi. So, nung campaign period, obviously, si um, incoming president Ferdinand Marcos Jr. was quite vague on the issue of unity at saka also in terms of his economic policy. Tapos meron pa yung 20 peso bigas. I don't know, tawag ko dyan, mga nutriban populism. Ewan ko sa mga yan. But these are the realities that we're gonna face, okay? So, una-una, wag natin kalimutan na pagdating sa ating ekonomiya, we had five quarters of economic contraction. So, ito yung in the initial phase uh, so first year on more of the pandemic no? At kung malala ni 2020, first quarter pa lang meron na tayong contraction Dahil nga, partly because of yung nangyaring eruption dyan sa may malapit sa Tagaytay diba? So five quarters tayo na economic contraction So that didn't help So now of course our growth rate is decent But remember, we have not fully recovered from yung numbers natin before Ayan na yung mga cousins natin Jan, kamusta Jan, Marco from Ibiza? Kung estas? Buenos dias Okay, so let me give you some numbers, guys. No, So, the country's outstanding debt, ito po yung utang natin, no? Lumaki po siya by 20% nung 2021 compared to 2020 level. So, umabot na po siya ng 12 trillion pesos almost. 12 trillion pesos. Ito po yung utang natin, nako po. So, medyo malaki-laki ito. At yung country's debt to... Debt to GDP ratio, so debt to gross domestic product ratio, we used to be around 35-40% not long ago. Now po, umabot na po siya ng 60.5%. Ito po yung highest rate of debt to GDP uh, ratio in the last 16 years. So, ito po yung magiging problema ni Bongbong Marcos. Nung pumasok po si Digong, ni Tatay Digong, nung 2016, he was benefiting from a lot of fiscal oh, fiscal space. It's like so a lot of room for spending. Dahil nga sa ginawang reforma ni President Arroyo, Tita Arroyo, and uh, God bless his soul, President Aquino. We had high growth rates. Our fiscal, parang our budget quadrupled almost in less than a decade. So pagdating ni Paolo Duterte, ang daming pera. So ang dami niyang pwedeng gawin. So yung mga support ni Tatay, ang galing ni Tatay, daming project ganun. Well, dahil maraming pera na na-save ng mga dating administration. So magpasalamat kayo, di ba, sa mga dating administration. And in fact, DOF Secretary Dominguez said we can have a golden age of infrastructure de development dahil sa mga magandang ginawa ng dating administrasyon. So si Dominguez mismo, ang DOF Secretary at kaibigan ni Pangulong Digong, is acknowledging yung, yung sacrifice ng mga da dating administration. High growth rates, uh, balanced budget, etc. But of course, yung kakulangan din ng mga dating administration is in terms of infrastructure spending. Now, medyo inayos yan, our ex infrastructure spending as, as, a, as, a, uh, um, as a share of our GDP increased to more than 5%, almost doubled. By the way, this is the time na DBM Secretary, Budget and Management Secretary, si, si uh, Benjamin Jokno, our incoming Def uh, Department of Finance Secretary. But ito eh, Dahil sa pandemia at pag-decrease ng growth natin, so dumi decreasing growth natin, nag-contract na yung economy natin for five quarters, gastos pa rin tayo, hindi po lumalaki yung buwis natin, yung tax base natin, ito, yung term, classroom ha, tax base, ito yung pwede mo i-collect ang tax, no? Yung tax collection rate natin na hindi ganun ka-effective, I think our tax effort, so ito, ito, so, sorry, I'm throwing out all of these terms, economics terms, but you have to learn it, guys. So tax effort, Ito yung share of your overall income in terms of tax collection of your GDP. So, yung tax collection uh, effort natin is, I don't know, 15 to 16%, which is Ramos level, much better than ERAP level. But it's nowhere close to France, which is like 30-35%. So, we're collecting 50% in terms of 
yung potential for tax collection kumpara dun sa mga mas malalaking at mas magagandang estado, mas malalakas at mga mas epektibo ang estado katulad ng Pransya, for instance. No? So, we're still well below our capacity. So, ito, pat- pababa yung economy, five quarters of contraction, syempre pandemia. Mataas pa rin yung gastos, kailangan ng stimulus program, etc. So, utang tayo ng utang, right and left, gastos pa tayo dito sa, of course, yung mga response natin sa pandemia, testing, all of that, tapos meron ka pang farmali, kung ano ang skandalo, etc. So, ito po nangyari, ang laki na ng utang natin ngayon. So, umabot na siya ng 12 trillion, right? Uh, so, ito, this, by the way, I'll post everything here. So, all of this is based on data. So, ito po yung draft ng article ko kanina. So, I have all the numbers here. So, umakyat po siya ng 20% year on year, last year, to 12 trillion. Tapos, yung debt to GDP ratio natin ay lumaki ngayon to 60.5%. Now, hindi ito kasing laki ng mga bansang katulad ng Greece or Spain, yung mga sovereign debt crisis na tinatawag noong mga late 2000s, sila umabot ng more than 100% yung debt to GDP ratio. But this is still the highest we have had in 16 years. So, ERAP level na umabot na ito. Eh. So, parang tatay digong ERAP, medyo ano. And both of them, interestingly, had Benjamin Jokno also as their DBM secretary. Isa pang problema po natin dito is yung um, yung inflation rate po natin. Ang inflation rate po natin is umabot almost to 4%, so 3.8% uh, noong April 2022 ayon sa Philippine Statistics Authority. no? Uh, Philippine Statistics Authority. Now, it's not the highest in the world. Of course, thank God we're not in the situation of some other countries like 30%, 25%. U.S. umabot ng 6 to 7%, whatever. But still, it's within the upper limit kasi medyo 3 to 5%. I mean, we, we hope to keep it at 3% or 2.5%. At kung ikaw ay mahirap na Pilipino, malaking bagay even with 3.8%. And by the way, this is average inflation of a basic basket of goods. Maari na yung mga ibang produkto dyan umakyat by 10%, 15%, 20%. Yung gasolina, di ba? Ang mahal ng gasolina nung isang buwan. At of course, hindi naman kasalanan yung tatay digong din yan. Um, Kasalanan din niya na maraming factors including yung pagtaas ng presyo ng langis, yung giyera sa Ukraine and Russia affecting uh, provision of food, fertilizer, among others. So, ang tawag dyan, external shocks. No? So, inflation situation is also not very good. Now, nonetheless, si Ferdinand Marcos Jr. ay nangako po siya, nangako po siya na mataas ang magiging growth natin, ibaba yung presyo ng mga basic na bilihin, uh, bigas, etc. Uh, and then, ito yung sinabi ni Bongo Marcos. Ah. Sinabi niya na we're planning and thinking of how we can boost the Philippines economy. So, growth is very uh, important. At ang gusto niya gawin is i- 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 pag- itutuloy niya yung President Duterte's Build, Build, Build project. And sabi, ito pa yung sinabi ni Bongo Marcos during kampanya. Ito yung sinabi niya nung panahon ng kampanya. We will expand and improve even yung BBB, Build, Build, Build project ni Pangulong Duterte. No? One second lang. Uh, may, may typographical yata. 3.8 pero dito sa draft ko it's um, 0.8 lang. Wait lang. I have to text this to my editor na hindi makamali. Uh, Inflation is 3.8. Sorry, uh, guys. Ay, nasabay-sabay yung matra. Okay. So, uh, what am I doing here, guys? I'm painting you the the reality of the economic situation na maharap ng parating nating presidente at administrasyon. Kaya nga napakamahalaga na mahusay po yung kanyang team. Dahil mataas yung expectation kay Pangulong Marcos Jr. Mataas po yung kanyang mga... Medyo tinaas din niya expectation kasi yung mga pangako niya, mataas na growth din ang gusto niya. Gusto rin niya ituloy itong mga build, build, build project. Now, let's go to some numbers, guys. I will post this to you again. Ha? So, ito po yung est- estado ng ating build, build, build infrastructure projects. no So... President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. will inherit 88 big-ticket infrastructure projects at 35 Jan ay matatapos by 2023. So, next year, ayan na. Credit grabbing! Ayan, eh, hindi naman siguro. Medyo nauhaw ako dito sa mga dami mga numbers sa utak ko ngayon. 
So, hindi kasi siya sponsored. So, hindi ko ipakita yung... <laughs> Ayan tayo. So, out of 88 big ticket projects, 35 lang matatapos. Tapos next year pa. So, marami hindi rin natapos sa panahon ni Duterte. Pero yung mga sinimula ng panahon ni Aquino, tinatapos naman ni Duterte. So, grabbing credit from each other. So, at least next year, si Pangulong Marcos will be in a position to at least say, may mga natatapos tayo and <laughs> claim credit for that. Now, up to 20 projects nga ay still under review. So, hindi pa sila talagang go-go-go eh. Parang nasa preliminary phase pa lang. So, it's very easy, sorry, for them to talk about may seed ba sa loob? To talk about um, big ticket projects. Pero marami dyan, under review. Tapos yung 35, hindi pa matapos. Uh, hanggang next year. Tapos 20 projects nga, under review. Now, Base sa mga datos na meron tayo, vast majority ng itong mga BBB projects, 60 out of 88, no? So, this is a huge number, uh, around 70%, consist of hard infrastructure projects like railway, roads, bridges, seaports, dams. So, medyo komplikado itong mga to eh. Kaya mahalaga din yung sinong piniling DPWH secretary ni Bongbo Marcos. At of course, alam natin yung pinili niya ay isang tao na I think sa mga tallway business. Eh. So, medyo siguro alam niya yung um, yung business ng infrastructure build-up and all. Wala na si ano eh. Mag-senator na si ano, si Mark Villar. mag na sila dyan sa Senado. So, ito ha. So, maraming matatapos hopefully God willing next year. 35. Pero 20 pa rin under review. At 60 out of 88. Ha, so, I'm giving you the clear numbers ay mga hard infrastructure. So, medyo komplikado yan. Kailangan talaga maayos. So, mahalaga din dito, guys, hindi yung econ team lang, pero bati yung DPWH secretary. Alright? So, I'm still doing some more reviews on this. But let's hope that things will move forward in the right direction dito. Kasi, guys, kailangan talaga natin ng infrastructure. Yun talagang kainaan ng ating bansa. Eh. Pag pumunta po kayo sa Thailand, hindi naman first world country, pero kung pumunta kayo sa mga probinsya nila, puro asfalto, napakaganda yung mga roads, napakaganda yung infrastruktura para sa kanila agrikultura. Uh, of course, ibang usapan na yung Malaysia, mga ganun na mas, ma- mas ma- mayayaman na bansa sa atin. So, sana naman medyo makumabol tayo. At kagandahan po naman dito sa uh, infrastructure development po is maraming trabaho ay pwedeng, uh, di ba, magkakaroon dyan. Dahil, syempre, when you're building bridges na, kailangan mo ng workers, di ba? At hindi naman kailangan na may PhD ka or Englishero ka. Uh, you know, people with relatively lower skills can work in these projects and have sustainable jobs for quite some time. Two years, three years, four years, five years, etc. At sana walang corruption is anything masyado. Para naman, di ba? Uh, para naman mag-benefit yung tao para hindi mapas- mapasa sa atin yung, uh, yung tax at saka expenditures. Now, ito kasi yung issue ngayon, guys. So, ito, let's, we, ito, econ talaga tayo today. Econ class tayo. So, seryosa na tayo. We're talking about numbers here. So, wala na mga bola-bola kanchawan dito. So, the reality is, cool, mag, mag, medyo maging kulang yung pera natin at medyo malaki na yung utang natin. So, yung isang solution na pinopropose ng paalis na administration, so I'm talking about Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III, is yung tinatawag na fiscal consolidation. In short, either medyo belt tightening or Medyo mag-scrape ka ng mga additional tax. ba? So, ang proposal ni Se- uh, Secretary Dominguez is Pursuing the fiscal consolidation and resource mobilization program as proposed will help us to continue to spend on socioeconomic programs, maintain our credit ratings, and grow out of our debt. Because guys, yung isa pang problema dito is kung tuloy-tuloy itong utang-utang gastos-gastos, bababa po yung ating credit rating. At kung bumaba po yung credit rating, mas mataas ang interest rate pag nangutang ka. Kasi kung pogi ka, mabango ang pangalan mo, pwede ka mag-utang ng loan, napakababa yung interest. So pwede ka mag-invest, gumawa ka ng trabaho, growth, and then bayaran mo later. Pero kung ma- hindi na mabango yung pangalan mo, malabo yung economy mo, gastos ka ng gastos, utang ng utang, pero hindi ka nag-raise ng new revenues or creating new growth, baksak yung sistema mo. And the last time we had the major financial debt crisis was in the early 1980s under Marcos Sr., right? So that's that's why a lot of economists were worried that another Marcos would be president. Again, this is based on facts, okay? This is based on facts. I, in, in the ito, YouTube uh, University, okay? We're talking about facts here. Uh, oh, so, ito yung debt crisis na meron tayo sa Philippines noong early 1980s. Hindi panahon ni Corazon to, ha? Aki na to, panahon ito, alright? Panahon ito. 
ni Marcos. Now, if you want to you don't believe me, basahin niyo si Gerard Sikat <laughs> na nagtrabaho sa administrasyon ni Marcos, no? Ito, so ito yung the Philippines in 1983 economic crisis, no? So, ito ah. <laughs> now, of course, I'm sure Gerardo Sikat will try to put some interesting uh, angle to this. But we had a foreign debt crisis. So, ito yun. Ha? So, Philippine faces foreign debt crisis, 1983. Okay, I'll post it there. So, yun ang hindi pwede. Nagastos ka ng gastos. Ang laki ng utang natin ngayon. Uh, Palis na si Tatay Digong, 20% increase dun sa isang debt natin last year pa lang. Kailangan na ayusin to. Kailangan na ayusin to. Hindi pwede. Kasi ngayon problema, guys. Eh. Parang ito yung tito mo na... Pagdating sa bahay, gastos ng gastos, party, party mode, masaya kaya. Ang ganding, ganda, ang astig ni Tito ah. The best si Tito, yung pala. <laughs> Lahat ng mga pinagastos niya, yung mga pinashot niya, mga ano nyo. Utang pa lang yan dun sa sari-sari store. Pero sa ilalim ng pangalan ng nanay at tatay nyo. So ikaw, kung hindi ka nagbabasa o hindi ka nagpo-follow up, tuwan-tuwa ka sa Tito mo. Tapos galit ka sa nanay at tatay mo. Bakit tatay, ba't ba tayo, hindi tayo, gagas, hindi tayo masaya, parating... Ano, belt tightening Kasi nga, yun problema Madali maggumastos kung utang yan Ang kawawa yung kailangan magbayat And in this case, tayo yan, di ba? Or yung mga susunod na administration na mas responsable So, pwede ka mag-go ahead Build all the infrastructure Pero kung utang lang naman niya, lahat yan And then, hindi naman maganda yung infrastructure Hindi naman na kompleto, puro naman corruption Kawawa yung mga susunod na henerasyon At yun po yung nangyari sa atin Last time my Marcos, my Marcos was in charge, di ba? We inherited more than 25 billion pesos. At yung sinasabi ng iba, hanggang ngayon, binabayaran pa natin kasi nag-utang tayo para bayaran yan. Now, I'm not here to talk about 1980s per se. What I'm telling you here is that, huwag kayong ma-impress agad dyan sa mga nagsabi, marami kami na bill, eh kung utang lang naman galing yan at hindi naman effective yung ginawa nilang projects or hindi na-create ng growth. Now, I am for borrowing if it's properly invested and it creates growth so that hindi mo lang mabayaran yung utang mo, na-create ka pa ng additional jobs and income. But is that the case that what happened in the past? No, it didn't. Okay? Now, let's see what's gonna happen now. Kaya nga mahalaga yung economic team ni Marcos. Kasi, guys, ito na, katotohanan na ito. Ay, hindi na ito, plataforma, Nutribond, 20 pesos bigas. Ito na, uh, talano. <laughs> hindi na ito yung gold bar. Hindi. This is serious stuff. Okay? We are in a serious territory. At andito tayo para analyze ano yung magiging options ni Bongo Marcos bilang presidente. Okay? So, ang proposal ni Dominguez is, of course, get out, get more out of the people, right? So, kailangan talaga daw dito is mag-introduce ng new tax measures, including suspending some of the tax deduction regimes na meron tayo, right? At sinabi ni Dominguez, kailangan talaga yan. Alam ko, mahirap yan. Marami sa atin, hindi, hindi pa kompleto yung, hindi pa... Um, employed, underemployed. Ako nga, ang dami kong projects dati. Wala na eh. Dahil sa pandemic, etc. Di ba? So, pero, <laughs> yung iba sa atin, wala ng tax breaks katulad ng dati or kailangan natin magbayad pa ng more tax. But Dominguez is saying, we need to take, oh, so to quote him, taking action now is our responsibility to future generations. Kasi kung utang lang tayo ng utang at hindi natin ayusin itong problema, This will be passed down to the next president and the next president and magsusnowball effect yung utang natin. Utang interest rate, utang interest rate, utang interest rate. The next thing you know, good luck na lang sa Pilipinas. Alright? Which is exactly what happened the last time. You know what I'm saying? Alright. Okay. So now, that is why kailangan mo ng isang ma- mahusay na team, technocratic team, that can balance this eh. Diba? That can balance this. Kung saan, Pwede tuloy pa rin yung BBB project, yung Build, Build, Build projects. Pwede pa rin ituloy yung emphasis sa job creation kasi syempre infrastructure projects, more growth, more jobs. But, dapat bawasan talaga yung corruption, bawasan talaga yung mga questionable yung proyekto, bawasan talaga yung mga palpak na proyekto, at bawasan yung utang na hindi effectively na reinvest doon sa ating ekonomiya. So, we have to have Not belt tightening per se, but calibrated borrowing and optimized investment. All right, so ito, uh, so we we need optimized investment, and we need to calibrate our borrowing, because if tuli tuli yung borrowing na ito, bababa narin yung ating credit rating na medyo maganda ngayon. In fairness, na na maintain naman ni Duterte yung good credit rating from Aquino years. 
Oo. But, kung tumaas yung ano natin, interest rate natin dahil bumaba yung credit rate, ayan, good luck na lang sa masusunod na henerasyon. Diba? Yung mga anak natin, tayo, pag tumanda na tayo lalo. Diba? Pag zaddy is more zaddy. Diba? So, so, kaya nga dapat talaga mahusa yung team ni Marcos pagdating sa uh, um, sa economic managers natin. No? So, so far, ang meron tayo dito is parang an all-UP team. Diba? So, halos lahat Except, I mean, depends on how you... I mean, you could say almost all of them are from UP School of Economics or they have been professors there, right? So, and dyan yung current Central Bank, BSP Governor B- Benjamin Jokno, who will take over as Department of Finance. Another UP School of Economics colleague, Felipe Medalia, who was uh, former NEDA, uh, will take over his job at Banco Central. And another UP School of Economics professor, Arsenio Balisacan, former NEDA, will also take over in this case also NEDA. At the same time, sa DTI naman, former UP president, uh, I, I think BAA siya, na management siya, hindi siya School of Economics, uh, yung school din ni Villar, siya yung take charge naman ng Department of Trade and Industry. So you'll have these four people really taking charge. It's very interesting. And of course, if you look at their portfolio, it's very interesting. Now, if you look at, for instance, Arsenio Balisa, let's go through them just quickly. Of course, I'm not gonna pretend that talagang kilala ko sila lahat 100%, but Ayan, medyo napaisip na tayo. Okay. Kung alam nyo, kilala si, Ma, uh, si, si Sir Balisakan. Si, si Prof. Balisakan, at, uh, maha, ma, talagang mahusay yan sa development and agricultural economics. No? Yun talagang expertise niya. So, kung pumunta kayo sa Google Scholar, yung mga ganon, tignan yung publication record niya. He's someone who knows about agricultural development and overall developmental economics. No? So, in that sense, I think he's the perfect guy. And the fact na dati nagtrabaho din siya sa Sa Aquino administration, I think it sends the right signal. No, now, The Marcos administration is open to get the best of talents, the best and brightest, whoever you work for in the past, including whether from rival families or uh, opposition, I mean, current opposition, whatever. You, you get what I'm saying? So, in fairness, uh, so um, I agree with Marcos, uh, President Marcos, that having someone like Balisakan will, is, is, is important because si Secretary Balisakan will also oversee uh, coordination of economic planning sa pagitan ng uh, Imperial Manila at saka yung mga LGUs at also looking at yung mga sector na pinabayaan talaga yung agricultural sector napakatanda na yung mga ating magsasaka dahil walang suporta sa mga anak nila ay na nila, ay na nila maging magsasaka gusto nila ibang trabaho na or mag-abroad na lang so we have to provide the agricultural sector all kinds of uh, you know uh, support systems subsidies, better irrigation, etc. to make sure, no, uh, while respecting our free trade agreements and WTO rules and all of that, to make sure na maritime food security. At historically, guys, kung tinignan yung mga ibang bansa, yung mga Taiwan, Korea, among others, ang first na inayos nila yung agricultural sector, then the manufacturing sector, then nung yumaman sila, they went into high-end services, right? Ang problema sa Pilipinas is, mahina yung agricultural sector mo, mahina yung manufacturing mo, tas over-focus ka sa low-end services. That's why you're not creating jobs. That's why hindi tayo umangat. We're getting it wrong. So instead of, you know, instead of getting this right before we go here, we went here, we got stuck here, hindi natin inayos yung manufacturing agriculture. So you have to fix these two and then you move it up, upwards. Again, as I said, the best book I think on this that will explain yung success ng mga ibang bansa is itong books by Joe Studwell, who has a PhD uh, in economics from Cambridge, but he's a journalist too. So he really knows what he's talking about. Napaka mahusay na book ito. Makikita niyo bakit nag-succeed yung ibang bansa pero hindi Pilipinas. All right. In fairness naman to President Marcos, the old President Marcos, at least he built irrigation. Yung irrigation infrastructure natin, I love that. Thanks to Marcos era. But of course, he was there for 20 years. Sana naman may nagawa sa buhay, di ba? Uh, so I hope the Marcos Jr., President Marcos Jr. will try to build on some of the good things in the past and also to make sure na yung mga pinabayaan ng mga sectors, meron tayong gagawin dyan. Okay. So, that's Arsenio Balisakan. I think he's a great guy to put there. Of course, he also worked in competition commission currently under the current president Duterte. So he's a supposedly a monopoly buster. So let's see how that will help him also in terms of overall economic planning for a country. Remember, guys, mahalaga din ang NEDA because NEDA will also oversee the approval of big projects, development projects, and infrastructure projects, including product projects from China. So one of the reasons maraming Chinese projects are hindi na ito dito sa Pilipinas is because the former NEDA chiefs. This is before Carl Chua pa. We're not approving a lot of these projects kasi mambo-jumbo. 
So mahalaga din maging trabaho ni RC Balisakan, Sir RC, because he will also be in charge of approving some of the better projects there. Okay. Now next let's go to Jokno, right? So in fairness kay Jokno, uh as I said, he was aggressive in terms of infrastructure spending as DBM. Nakasabay pa kami. Uh, again, disclosure, I gave, I was one of the speakers at the Build, Build, Build Duterte Nomics Forum in 2017. So sila nag-speech, tapos kami nag-speech kami ni Cecilio uh, Chelito Habito. No? So I was one of the outside experts who gave speech also on infrastructure development. You can check it online. No? So disclosure lang, okay? So everything I'm saying here is not out of nowhere because I've been interacting including with this administration uh, on the question of infrastructure development, etc. Okay, you can check it online. Just put, hey, Darian, Duterteonomics. May kita niyo yung speech namin dyan. Okay. All right. There, that doesn't mean I'm DDS. <laughs> okay. Just, okay, just look at what... what uh, now, so he was very aggressive on infrastructure development. And then nung nag-BSP naman siya, as the BSP, in fairness naman to him, he pushed for financial market, financial sector regulation to make sure walang mambo-jumbo nangyari, lalong-lalo na panahon na pandemic, maraming mga, ano yan, budul-budul, <laughs> budul-budul gang nangyari, bati sa mga banking and financial sectors, di ba? Mahirap na yan. So, central bank, trabaho nila talaga to make sure some of the good financial regulations is there. And second, interest rate adjustments kasi that will help you to protect your currency and make sure the inflation doesn't get out of control. So, in fairness, Despite all the difficulties and the limited mandate of Banco Central, I think Jokno did a pretty okay job. I think he even won an award, no? one of the best central bankers. But he's not the first. Amado Tetanko in the past, uh, during Aquino, he won, I don't know, I lost count of how many bank, Banco Central, central Banker of the Year award he won. But in fairness to Jokno, he didn't disappoint. All right? Now, Jokno coming in, baka pinanood niya yung ating meta. No? Ito yung sinabi niya. As finance secretary, I will strive to, to continue prudently and carefully balancing the need to support economic growth. Ito yung sinasabi niya. Emphasis on infrastructure investment, on growth, employment generation, but at the same time, maintain fiscal discipline. So, ang sinasabi ni Ben Jokno dito is that if akala mo, tuloy-tuloy lang spending namin and borrowing, don't worry, gets ko, meron tayong problema, so I'll try to balance it out. In a recent interview, sinabi din ni Ben Jokno that he's gonna keep the top uh, you know, people, including assistant secretary, under secretary, chief economist, DOF, etc. Once he takes over, so there'll be policy continuity. So he's not going to bring a whole team and then back to zero, diba? So there'll be continuity. Now, uh, Felipe Medalia, who will take over, dating neda chief din yata siya, he will take over, also UP School of Economics prof, he will take over yung trabaho ni Benjamin Jokno sa BSP, and I have complete confidence in him doing the right thing there and keeping things uh, on an even kill. And then si Alfredo Pascual, dating presidente ng UP naman, ay mag-take charge naman ng ating DTI sector. So siya yung dating presidente ng Management Association of the Philippines. For almost 20 years, he worked at the Asian Development Bank. Marami din siyang background in the, uh, uh, in the investment uh, banking sector. No? So nag-executive position siya sa, sa RCBC, sa First Metro Investment Corporations, and Bancom Development Corporations. So in fairness sa kanya. So anyway, in many ways you can say, this is quite closer to the supposed best and brightest A-list cabinet that we need, at least in terms of economic managers. So in fairness naman to incoming President Marcos, uh, he, he realizes that he really needs adults in the room. At hindi pwede mga amateur hour or joke time or yung kaibigan mo lang na businessman ilalagay mo dyan if ever wala naman siyang relevant background. So very experienced people, top level academic UP professors, top level former cabinet ministers or even current uh, top positions like Banco Central Chief uh, in the case of Benjamin Jokno. So good, good, good one. Good one. I like this. Uh, so I think Marconomics might have some future if these people do what they need to do and what they have to do to make sure we have growth but don't overspend, don't overborrow, and don't repeat the mess we had in the past. And Ayusin also yung mga excesses of President Duterte. Now, on the issue of tax increase, I think that will be a potentially... Uh, difficult one for Marcos because I don't think Marcos wants to be a president who will start on tax increases. So let's see how, what he will do on that front. Kaya, tignan natin ano yung mga next moves ni Benjamin Jokno. So, so of course, what you should do here is increase the tax on those who can pay it but not on those who cannot pay it. And then use the additional revenues to invest in infrastructure and all in ways that you can create jobs and growth for those who are more vulnerable and more adversely affected by the pandemic. Alam natin, yung mga pinakamayaman sa ating bansa, I think they had a 30% increase in terms of their wealth 
even during pandemic, habang marami sa ating mga Pilipino ay naghirap pa no, ng pandemic. So, there has to be a balanced way kung saan the pressure should not be on ordinary Filipinos but more on those who actually become became even richer during the pandemic period. I think that way then Marcos can increase the taxes without hurt, hurting his political base. Now, nonetheless, let me go back to this point. Mga, wala, mahaba, naging mahaba na yung lecture natin. Econ na naman tayo. So, next time na lang siguro ulit yung West Philippine Sea and all. Uh, Hopefully, by Monday or bukas, meron na tayong update, guys, sa DFA and DND. Siguro bukas na lang, God willing, if may time tayo. Yun ang pag-usapan natin. Kasi there's some encouraging developments also on the foreign policy front. And even Albert de Rosario, dating foreign secretary ni Aquino, welcomes some of the good remarks by incoming President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. So, interesting. Very interesting. Now, let me emphasize this point. For Marcos says, this is not just about Getting the economic question right. This is not just about, we're just another administration, we're going to come and go. No. Sabi nga ni Aimee Marcos, they, don't want, they do not want to waste yung second chance. Kasi they're very grateful. So, ito, tinranslate ko into English yung sinabi niya. Kasi mix, mix siya eh. So, ito yung, essentially, ito yung sinabi niya. Yes, we're very, very grateful for a second chance, as it were, since our family has been through a lot. In recent decades, referring to all of the cases on ill-gotten wealth and abuses, etc., wealth and abuses and all of that. So our family has suffered a lot, on, uh, a lot in in the past almost four do- decades. Uh, so ngayon, parang point na is, we don't want to become controversial again and and create another people power and other polarizing politics and all. And so so we have to get it right and. Uh, uh, matatag na leadership yata yung something like that no? na pamumuno matatag na pamumuno yun po yung kailangan natin so we need a strong leadership uh, and part of that strong leadership will be a good cabinet that will handle technocratic issues which obviously are not expertise of Bongbong Marcos ayoko nang balikan yung solgen ano, solvent mga ganon but obviously you need real experts to handle these economic issues I wanted to talk about more about yung foreign policy, etc. Pero siguro bukas na lang, guys. Bukas na lang, guys. Abangan nyo na lang para naman, naman, para naman balikan nyo naman ako. Hindi, yung, hindi ko na ibigay lahat sa inyo kaagad, alright? But I hope you get what I'm saying, right? So, tax effort, we have to increase that. Your ability to collect taxes. We have to optimize uh, our investment and calibrate our borrowing. Uh, so, I think that if we do that way, then Marconomics might just work. And this kind of team of rival that we created overall, because there are people from Aquino admin, from Estrada admin, from Duterte admin, some of them, all of these admins, all of them putting them together. Who knows? It might just work. But Marcos Jr. has to provide the kind of encouraging, big picture leadership. And at the same time, dapat bibigyan niya ng sapat na autonomy dito sa mga iba't ibang kabinete to do the right thing for the country, not for the president, not for the administration, not for popularity, not for Nutriban, not for 20 peso because, but for something that will really help the whole country and lift all of us and help us to get out of this pandemic and also to make sure we build natin infrastructure natin all of that and avoid all the fi- financial crisis and disaster during the Marcos dictatorship era, right? Okay. Lahat yan, ipopost ko dyan, so don't worry about it. Okay? Ah, oh, ano yan, Annabelle? Itatroll mo na naman ako. Ah, anong ininom ko? Sorry, akala. Ano? Kalaman si Juice. Kalaman si Juice. Pag ano, pag economics numbers, dapat kalaman si Juice. <laughs> Kailangan mo ng vitamin C and all of that. Or, hindi pwede na lang. Kape lang. Baka kape, masyado ako maging hyper kung ano nang sasabihin mo, diba? Oh, sorry, I, I had to message pala may ano eh. My editor, yung 3.8 nilagay ko, 0.8. I didn't put the 3, eh. I was rushing it, eh. Oh, yeah, okay. Nakuha na ng editor ko. Um, yeah, so, Markonomics, team of rivals. Don't worry, guys. Pag-publish, God willing, itong article, ipopost ko dyan sa page ko, ha? Basahin nyo, guys, para ma-appreciate nyo naman where I'm coming from. So, okay. So, ito, guys, ganito tayo, di ba? Ganito lang tayo. All right? We're here to have proper discussion, almost like classroom discussion na ito, di ba? You can see, I'm, I'm, yun ang gusto, see, walang, walang paninira, walang bastusan, walang kanchawan, walang ganang. We're just having proper discussion, understanding the policy space, especially in terms of macroeconomics for the incoming administration. So for a moment, ipark natin, parang bus. Lahat ng mga politika, paninira, aawayan, asaran, 
let's just focus on the economic issues here. No? So, yun po yung ginagawa natin dito. So, marami salamat. Yeah. Kasi kanina pa ako going through all of these numbers. Kaya ito lang juiced out ako eh. Ang dami kong numbers na sinicheck eh. Ilang persons dito, ilang persons dyan, ganun, ganun. So, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. So, medyo kalaman si juice talaga ang kailangan natin dyan. O, yung mga kaibigan naman natin dyan. Baka naman, baka naman. Wala yata sa Starbucks ganun. <laughs> Kalaman si Jules, yan. Meron sila Starbucks yung medyo social na masyadong mayaman. Kaya pag ininom ko, parang, parang sayang, konti-konti na. Hindi, <laughs> hindi, joke lang, joke lang. Yan, joke lang, baka mga ano. Hindi, hindi, hindi. Ay, hindi, meron silang coconut water dun sa Starbucks. Ma- ma- masarap siya, masarap siya, in fairness. Oo, yun ang option B ko, coconut. O, ano na, na coconut na kayo, no split na tayo. Hindi naman tayo ng nosebleed kasi kanina ko pa. Ang dami kong chinecheck ng numbers kanina. How do I put this all together? In a way that's understandable by, you know, lay audience, di ba? Hindi naman tayo sa uh, econ class. This is a policy class. This is a policy sciences class. So I'm explaining to you in layman language, uh, uh, you know, this economic importance of having a good econ team, di ba? Kasi nga, hindi pwede gastos ka lang ng gastos at <laughs> ng credit grab, ng credit grab at nutriban ng nutriban, gano'n. Ma- babaksak yung economy natin. We cannot do that. Okay? Dapat responsable talaga tayo, guys. Talagang dapat responsable tayo. Okay? Now, kapon, some people took exception to us posting about yung solgen, solvent, mga gano'n. I mean, come on, guys. Come on. As I said, putting humor aside, yes, everyone has frailties and all of that. But some people are saying, sana naman kong president, eh? please, you know, you show familiarity with ICC versus ICJ, what, you know, what soldier, etc. But I'm not even going to go into that. Lahat naman tayo imperfecto. Uh, we make mistakes and all of that. But let's not also forget what they did to our outgoing duly elected Vice President, Lenny Robredo. Lahat yung splice videos, etc. trying to question their competence or intelligence, whatever. Even though I think tao actually graduate ng dalawang degrees, di ba? So, yun lang, di ba? Sport lang dapat, di ba? Sport lang dapat. Pero ako, di ba? You saw it. Even though medyo may masara ng konte, we went straight to business. Oh, I think notes natin from kapo, no? Hindi naman puro mga solvent, solgen. Uh, ano nandito? You can see this is a very serious discussion we had yesterday. Uh, the technocratic alchemy of the appointments of President uh, Marcos, yung unorthodox, heterodox, new Keynesian, post-Keynesian. New liberalism, lahat ng dinis natin, expansion of fiscal policy. So guys, come on, come on guys. I mean, medyo kanchawan tayo here and there, but hindi tayo bastusan. Hindi tayo mga junk food blogger style. Hindi tayo ganyan guys. Yan, Elon Musk. Boom, boom. Yeah, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Yan. Aran, oh, may tanong ba tayo dyan? Mamaya na tayo kay ano. Today, gusto ko mag-focus dun sa mga medyo high level na cabinet appointments, okay? Mamaya na tayo dun sa mga deep ed, ay sorry, depth ed, and, uh, and basta, ayoko na mag-selta. Ma- mamaya na yan, mamaya na yan. Si, bakit wala yung mga Duterte, by the way? Si Tatay Digong, yung mga iba dun sa proklamasyon ni Sara. Di ba parang wala sila? Bakit kaya? Yung Marcos family, kompleto eh. Andun silang lahat eh. Happy-happy happy sila eh. Alright. Ayan, sabi ni Liza, I'm a fan, but please do not join the cabinet. Eh, marami na akong kabineta dito eh. Hindi ko na kailangan sumali sa kabineta. May kabineta na ako dito. Kompletong kabinete ko dito lahat. Econ, portfolio, eh, uh, foreign policy. Meron pa akong, hindi, wala akong dep-ed dito. Diba? Kompletong mga kabinete ko dito, okay? So don't worry about me. Okay? Yeah, tsaka yun nga, if you work in the government, I'm not saying I'm being offered or anything. I'm just saying if you work in the government, it's very limiting, guys. And I'm sure, hindi na ako pwede magpa-Omanpur interview, Farid Zakaria, New York Times and all. Kasi you're working for the government, you have to speak for the government. So, it's very limiting. It's very limiting. That's why I'm sure there are a lot of very smart people there na parang ayaw nila mag-work sa government. Uh, but as I said, if you can help the country best way that way, then go. Kaya support naman ako kay, kay uh, kila Ma'am Opless, uh, sila Prof. Balisakan, etc. who joined the Marcos administration because I'm sure they'll do their best for the country. Alright, and then let's see who will be the DFA secretary. Malay natin. Baka yung DFA secretary medyo uh, malapit sa puso natin or something like that. Uh, maybe we can help them in, in whatever capacity, etc. But I hope you are understanding what I'm trying to do here. Okay, um, you know, we have, I can speak for myself totally. And I'm happy to be able to just speak for myself. I'm accountable for myself. I speak for myself. At Jan, and you know, no one can tell me what to say. I'm, I'm my own guy, right? 
So this is what I enjoy, especially this is social media. We can, of course, a TV, etc. Hindi ako pa magsalita ng ganong katagal, diba? may limitasyon tayo in terms of format. But here at least we have, we have a good, good, good way to discuss these things. Uh, any questions, guys? Uh, ah, dun sa so tanong ni Lenny Lin dun sa issue ng productivity. No. Okay, medyo complicated ang issue yan because wala, akong, wala naman magic solution. But, no, I think we really have to invest in, in agricultural sector productivity that will enhance both our food security and also can create uh, the necessarily surplus income to also push for low-end manufacturing. But kailangan din natin ng seryosong trade and industrial policy. Kasi yun, yung, yun yung kulang sa mga dating administration. Wala silang trade policy para i, i-develop yung sarili nating industriya. Bakit... Import lang tayo ng import sa ibang bansa. Tingnan mo yung China, yung mga kotse ng China, yung mga cherry-cherry, dati pinagtatawanan lang namin. Tingnan mo yung mga kotse nilang gano'n. Ngayon, ang ganda. Ang ganda ng kotse ng mga China. <laughs> Mas maganda na yung mga kotse nila. Halos sa mga Korean cars eh. Halos na same level na eh. Not, not Japan yet, but almost there, di ba? Bakit? Because may industrial policy yung China. Sinusuporta nila yung domestic manufacturers. Eh China, pinagtatawanan lang natin 10 years ago. Tingnan mo, gaganda ng mga kotse nila, yung mga SUVs nila and all. Right? Yung electronic cars nila, napakaganda. Baka better pa than Tesla, tas mura pa. Why can't we do that? Ano namang kulang sa atin, di ba? At yun na para di mo sinisabi, si Marcos at 20 years in power, but wala tayong anything like Hyundai, uh, wala tayong anything like the Chables of Korea. Meron siyang cronies. Alam niyo na sa inyo mga yan, di ba? Pero wala siyang ganun. So, saan naman we'll work on that, guys? We need to invest in those sectors. And sabi ko nga, saan yung susunan natin DFA secretary and secretaries? Medyo may alam din sa economics. Para they can coordinate it with DTI. Kasi you need a diplomat who's also good in economics, also good in international affairs, also has some basics uh, in international law, etc. Para naman maging more effective, di ba? So, I, I'm also looking forward. So, I'm still waiting for the appointments on DND and DFA. Alright. As I said, I'll support whoever is there as long as hindi kakaibang ewan ng gagawin, di ba? We'll, we'll help in whichever way we can. Okay? Well, in the interest of defending our national interests, obviously, right? Okay. Oh, yan, yung Gili. Gili, di ba? Gili. Ang ganda ng mga car nila ng China, di ba? Ten years ago, pag sinabi sa'yo, China car, di ba? Tata- mat- matatawa ka. Ngayon, ang ganda ng mga kotse nila. Parang yung Gili car, yung iba, parang ano eh, di ba? Parang Range Rover, yung Chura, di ba? Parang kinop yung Range Rover. Ang ganda. Ang ganda. In fairness to them, Cherry, Gili, ang ganda. Because they, they, they support their internal uh, manufacturing sector. Yan ang wala sa atin, yung mga cronies natin, oligarchs natin, purong mga services lang at saka extractive industries. Walang nagma-manufacturing, kaya kailangan ng government i-push sila, eh. mag-invest kayo sa manufacturing, ano ba yan? But wala tayong sariling kotse, yung Malaysia, di ba, may proton? Put- nakapunta kayo sa Malaysia, di ba, KL, may- mayroon sila ng sariling kotse, yung proton, ang ganda, di ba? O ba tayo walang ganun? Hindi naman, actually, it's not even that hard to make cars and all. I mean, the old, kailangan wala ng good policy. Sustain good policy. Thailand nga, halos lahat ng mga Toyota, Honda natin dito sa Southeast Asia, galing sa Thailand yan, eh. hindi naman sa Japan yan. Eh. So, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, kumpara lang natin sa rin sa China, Thailand, Malaysia, ano pinag gagawa natin, di ba? Nakakaya yun, di ba? We, should, we have to do something about that. Run. Sarah all. Sarah all. Oh, tama ka, Steven. Oh, the same way na, oh, tama yung Geely designer galing Volvo. In the same way na yung mga Korean cars, yung mga designer nila, mga Italian uh, car designers. Kaya ang gaganda ng mga Hyundai na bago and etc. Diba? Because they also got Italian designers. So, ganun eh. You start, syempre sa una, pagtatawanan ka. But over time, if sustain yung support, you b- b- build all your own brand, brands. O yung tignan mo yung TikTok ngayon, kasing lakas na ng Twitter, di ba? Mas malakas pa yata sa Twitter ang TikTok ngayon. O, dati pag sinabi China, parang ano yun, app. Tapos ngayon, gal- galing nila. So, and guess what? This is also what Korea did 34 years ago. This is what Japan did 60 years ago. And Malaysia, they're doing that in their own smaller ways, humbler ways. Th- Thailand is the car manufacturing hub of, of Asia. They're building 1 million cars a year at least. Diba? Sayang guys, sayang. Kaya talaga pag tumunan ng pansin dapat itong economics din. Diba nakaka-proud kung meron tayong sariling brand na Filipino car? Siguro yung mauna, hindi ganun kaganda, pero over time, maganda. In fact, tignan mo yung cars ng Vietnam. Yung Vin car ba yun? Vin. Ang ganda kayo ng mga car ng Vietnam. 
Out of nowhere lang yun. Meron silang parang isang mayaman na parang Ayala tayo. Tapos sabi niya, gawa ako ng car ko. Tapos kumotion ng designer from Ford, etc. Next thing you know, meron na silang mga factories na gagawin sa US na electric car. Tignan yung car ng, ng Vietnam. Napakaganda yung mga kotse. Ito, 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 ito. So, kaya naman nila. Is kaya din natin. Why not? Policy lang naman yan eh. Nag, may picture nga ako. Nag, nakipicture ako nung nasa uh, Vietnam ako ng 2020. Ganda kaya ng mga kotse nila. Ito. Ito, ang gwapo. Tingnan mo. Stigo. Ito, ito. Yung, ito, yung VinFast. O, oh, parang dati nakakatawa lang yung tura. Ngayon, gaganda ng mga VinFast nila. Oh. Okay. VinFast. Meron na yata din sa Pilipinas na may nakita akong VinFast, ha? Oh. Oo. Tapos meron din India, di ba? Ito, guwapo. Oh. Tignan nyo. Oo. Oh. Stig, oh. Parang ano. Parang Tesla, eh. Oh. Kailan lang ginawa yan? Oo, oh, ngayon meron na silang 2 billion dollar na gagawin na factory sa US pa. Ang guwapo. Ang ganda, oh. Stig, oh. Look at that, man. That's Vietnam. Oh. Kaya natin yung VinFast. We just need to push our oligarchs and industrialists to invest naman sa manufacturing sector. At kaganda na manufacturing sector, oh, ito, classroom, uh, economies of scale. The more you make cars, the cheaper it becomes, the more you have profit, the more people you can hire. So may upward trajectory yan. And you can provide job to many Filipinos even, in the, even though hindi ka engineer or something like that. You get what I'm saying? Masyado tayo umasa sa call center, sa, sa real estate, sa malls, ganun. Dapat hindi ganun ang growth natin. Dapat manufacturing and agriculture driven. So my best wishes for the incoming uh, 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 administration's economic team. I hope you do the right thing and you have my full support, sir, ma'am, whoever is in charge when it comes to pushing for Philippines manufacturing industry revival, Philippines agricultural sector's development. Yon, para hindi lang tayo sa mga purong services sector lang tayo, purong services sector. That's not going to get us anywhere over the long run in terms of reaching first world level. Kailangan natin mag first world, guys. Tama na yan, nakakapagod ng third world, third world style na yan. Level up, guys. Level up. Alright? Thank you very much sa mga nagbigay ng star and support. I know the discussion today was very serious. Uh, parang meta 3 na tayo today. Eh. Hindi lang meta 2. Meta 3 talagang technical classroom discussion. No, Of course, in a simplified way. Uh, I'm not gonna pretend that that was like super high level economic discussion. But, you know, so I, I like what we're discussing here. And don't worry, guys. Ipopost ko sa baba some of the Uh, data that I've used and cited and yung article ko dito para makita niyo yung ginagawa natin. Yes, manufacturing agriculture sector. We need to build that if we want to create jobs for the Filipino people. And sana comes the day when we have our own brands of cars, electronics, etc. Because kaya natin yan eh. Hindi naman ganun kakomplikado yan eh. Lalo ngayon, in this age, you can get designs, technology, etc. You can get smart people to bring in. Kaya kaya yan. Ang dami natin mga billionaires na dollar billionaires eh. So we have to push them in the right direction. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Ayan. Thank you again sa mga nagbigay ng star, nagbigay ng supporta. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you kay, ayan, kay Let, Let, kay Mish. Ayan, si Mish, supporter natin yan. Ayan, si Mish, ano yan? Fiscal incentives. Tama yan, tama yan. We need fiscal incentives, true. And also, also, we have to make sure we have the human capital to support these infrastructure sectors. R&D, research and development, very, very important. E galing sa UP lahat yung mga kukinukuha ni Marcos, eh, R&D, dapat alam nila yan, research and development. Yeah, tama yun, Che. I, ako, I, I look forward to, may pera lang sana tayo at sa may magandang Tesla dito, yan ang bibili natin. Yan talagang, this is the future, guys. Ayan, thank you dun sa mga nagbigyan ng support, uh, stars. Ayan. Uy, para medyo konti ng mga trolls natin ngayon. Ha? Ganun pala, guys. Pag seryoso na tayo, nagsizone out na sila. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you kay Fanny. Sa mga comments and support nyo. Ayan. Oh, ito, itong Meta 3 tayo today. Ha? Completely objective, serious stuff. Thank you kay Rowena for your star and support. Thank you kay Patrice. Thank you, sir, for your support. Ayan, nag-level up talaga tayo. And I hope we'll have more of this. Of course, not every day. Magkakantsawan din tayo once in a while para naman masaya. Kapan kasi medyo may kantsaw tayo ng konti na misunderstand na naman tayo ng tao. Huwag naman ganun, guys. Right? We're still serious. Thank you kay Michael Uy. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you. 
Ayan, wala nang questions? Shall we go back to our lives? <laughs> Chatrabaho natin. Yeah, so, grabe, dami notes bigla. Dati, gato, ganyan lang kasimple yung mga pages ko. Ngayon, ang ano na, ang komplikado na. Naging ganyan na ngayon. So, magiging ano na, nanganganak ng mga subtopics. Yes, we need R&D. Research and development. Yun ang dapat focus natin. So, di, tignan din natin sino mga next in, in charge dun sa mga DOST, mga ganun. Alright? Sana yung budget din. Thanks, Rowena, for your star, for your support. Thank you sa mga friends natin na have been joining us. Of course, my cousin, Marco. Muchas gracias. Toto, for joining us from Espanya. Thank you to our friends na sumasali sa atin from Gitnang Silangan. Thank you to Steven for your support again. Alam ko, Steven, you're a big support of ours throughout the months. Thank you kay Jasper. Thank you to our friends from Canada, from US, Estados Unidos. Where are my Mexicano, mi gente, mi people? Where are my people, my uh, hermanos? Where are there no one from Mexico watching me? I'm making us proud. I am making us proud, amigos. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you kay Jasper. Ay na, lumalabas na naman si Fuego. Ay na, mag, uh, let's get real. Let's get real. And thank you also, of course, friends natin from Saudi, from Qatar, Doha. Yeah, yung mga Qatar, ha? Malapit na World Cup. Friendships. Friendships. Ano PM, PM niyo na lang ako yung details. Alright. Mahal lang hotel, eh. Kasi mag-World Cup na. Friends natin from United Arab Emirates, from Dubai. Friends natin from Mindanao, from QC, from across the country. Quezon City, Makati, Rizal, Cagayan. Lahat niyan. Thank you so much. Yan. Oh, talaga. Guys, now you see, who knows, right? Maybe we need an academy because marami na tayong pinag-usapan, hindi lang politika. Today, talagang almost 90% economics lang pinag-usapan natin. Sobrang konti lang yung politika. Which is good. Actually, I, honestly, ever since talaga, ayoko talagang politika. Pero nung tumakbo na si Digong, sabi ko, sige, patulang ko na to. Mag-political analyst na ako. Parang ganun eh. <laughs> Kasi dati foreign policy lang ako yun all eh. Tapos sabi, nung tumako ba na si Digong? Sige. Sige, patulang ko na to. <laughs> yeah, we are here where we are. But now, hopefully, we can transition back into more serious discussion and all of that. Alright? So, thank you very much. Thank you kay Nympha for your support and stars. Very kind of you. Yes, thank you kay Ponsano. Yes, very kind of you for, I know, 8 p.m. na, so siguro yung ibasa niyo pagod na, or gabi na, or etc. So, I really appreciate it. Oh, adamat nga kapsat, from Baguio. Yan. Yan, yan. <laughs> Alam niya na yan. Alam niya na ibig sabihin yan. Bahala na kay Jan. Mga friends natin, Jan. From BGC, huh? Steven, huh? BGC represent. Yo, Zadi, Zadi, represent. Sino Presidente? Yan! Akala nyo lang, ha? Kaya ko rin yung mga moves na yan. Akala nyo yan, ha? Cousins, alam nyo yan. Mga moves ko dyan. Sino Presidente? GL. <laughs> yan, yeah, okay. Tama na yan. Okay. Thank you kay Corinne. Walang yan. Nung nagsaya ako, dumami yung stars natin. Ayoko sa inyo. Ayoko talaga. Alam mo, masama kayong tao. Nung nag mga... GMRC moves lang ako doon na kayo nagbibigay ng stars. Parang kayo na parang, dami ko sinasabing thank you, wala pa rin lumalabas. Parang, ano kayong gagawin natin dito? Ayan, nag moves tayo, GMR. Ayan, thank you kay Jamie, kay Annalyn, kay Maria. Ayan, I think this is the response. I don't think it's the lecture. I think it's the, it's the moves. It's the moves. Yeah, yeah. Mga ganun, yung mga moves. Yung, alam mo yung mga wave na ganun? Yeah. Yung mga ganun. Yung mga sharp moves. To the side, expansionary fiscal policy, tensionism, yeah, technocratic, Marcos, yeah, team of rivals, yeah, Sino President. <laughs> Wala na, sumobra na. Thank you kay Ninang. O yan na, nag-walk out na yung iba. Tama na yan, tama na yan, tama na yan. Guys, come on, saan kayo nakakanap ng ganitong vlogger? Huh? Bibigay sa inyo ng lecture ng 40 minutes on... Budget deficit, debt to GDP ratio, and then digla sa dulo. GMRC, sino presidente, sino presidente. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah!